issues with regard to the construction of the Keystone Pipeline, something that's been in dispute, and it's subject to a renegotiation of terms by us. We'll see if we can get that pipeline built. A lot of jobs, 28,000 jobs, great construction jobs. We build the pipelines, we want to build the pipe. Going to put a lot of workers, a lot of steel workers back to work. We're bringing manufacturing back to the United States Big League. I am, to a large extent, an environmentalist. I believe in it. But it's out of control. Workday two. A lot of stuff going on. Here's what happened today. Executive orders that President Trump signed. Reviving the Keystone XL pipeline project. Reviving the Dakota Access pipeline project. Gives the Commerce Department 180 days to maximize the use of U.S. steel in the pipelines. Direct uh, the Commerce Department to streamline the permitting process for manu manufacturing. Expedite the environmental permitting process for infrastructure projects that includes pipelines, roads, bridges, etc. Well, TransCanada put out a statement quickly. This is from their spokesperson. We appreciate the President of the United States inviting us to reapply for KXL. We currently are preparing the application and, and intend to do so. KXL, and this is again the XL. Keystone XL Pipeline, creates thousands of well-paying construction jobs and would generate tens of millions of dollars in annual property taxes to counties along the route, as well as more than $3 billion to the U.S. GDP. Earth Justice, an environmental group, says we are shocked and dismayed by today's news because it puts water for millions at risk. It goes on after that. Let's bring in our panel. Guy Benson, political editor at townhall.com. Tim Farley, host and managing editor of Morning Briefing, POTUS on Sirius XM Radio, and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Okay, Guy, thoughts on, uh, well, I guess the past two days, but today's actions. On the pipelines, this is a layup for Donald Trump. It's good optics, it's good economics, it's good politics. And it's a clear pivot away from the Obama administration that slow walked these things and killed the pipelines, I think, for nakedly political reasons. Uh, that was a pander to certain interests within the Democratic coalition, well moneyed interests on the environmental sort of green side of things, and Trump is not going to be indebted to them. So this sort of rolls into one neat package, a number of different narratives that Trump wants to pursue about his administration, creating jobs, putting working people to work, and no one's going to be cheering louder than some of those union bosses with whom he met just yesterday in Washington, D.C. A lot of bipartisan support for this uh, smart move, no-brainer. Yeah, and that union image, the fact that he had that, that meeting with seven unions who all endorsed Hillary Clinton in the election was quite something. Yeah, it was, and this is kind of a short-term thing in some ways in terms of jobs, because because permanent jobs will not be plentiful as a result of this. I think one of the things that goes even deeper, especially with the Dakota Access Pipeline, is that this attacks, and some of those other executive orders you mentioned, the kind of process to get these things approved. Because Dakota Access Pipeline was approved long ago, then it was stopped, and it, it's this interminable waiting period. It's uncertainty for business. So I think in some ways that even has more of an effect on business going forward. And that's, again, another way for him to check off the list of things that he said he wanted to do when he was elected. Charles environmentalists say this is uh, dirty. It is going to create more pollution in our country. Supporters of these pipelines say it's actually very clean compared to doing it on a railway or taking it by truck across the country. Yeah, There have never been weaker arguments against the project than on the Keystone Pipeline. Uh, their assumption is that Canada would stop extracting the oil sands in the north of Alberta if we didn't have the pipeline, which is always absurd. It's a huge resource for Canada. It's the future, and all they have to do, instead of going south, is to go west to export it to Asia. So that was a completely empty argument. And you're right about the pipeline. I mean, if it doesn't go by pipeline, this oil ore in the Dakota project, it ends up in rail cars which is much dirtier. The pollution is at least twice as much and dangerous. There was an accident in Quebec of a rail, a rail uh, um, a shipment of uh, crude oil that wiped out half a town and dozens of human beings. We're not talking about abstractions here with carbon in the air. So there was never a strong argument. It was all symbolism. The, the Obama administration was cravenly cynical putting it off because its own State Department, when it had a real, honest, 
examination of the issue concluded that it was not going to hurt the environment. But I agree that the, uh, in the end what's going to have the most effect is the directive to streamline the permitting of other projects in the future because that has been killing initiatives on infrastructure and also on plant construction. And so that's the permitting process and just the images of the president uh, signing these things, calling the press in, uh, seems to be a positive thing for the Trump administration. This, however, seems to be a negative thing. Uh, focus on something the president said in a bipartisan meeting with congressional leaders saying that he likely won the popular vote because there were three to five million illegal voters. Uh, that took up a lot of oxygen at the news briefing this afternoon. Are you going to ask for an investigation? Is the White House going to formally ask for a probe into this alleged? No, I think we, we, he won very, very handily with 306 electoral votes, right. 33 states. He's very comfortable with his win, but I think... It's trouble him if he's bringing it up. I, I think he was having a discussion with some folks and, and mentioned something in passing, which has been a long-standing belief that he's maintained. This isn't the first time that you've heard this concern of his, right? No, but I think Thanks, it's Sean. worth clarifying whether illegal ballots or illegal... And I, I think there's been studies. There was one that came out of Pew in 2008 that showed 14% of, of people who have voted were non-citizens. Okay, Guy, your thoughts? Well, we're talking about this, aren't we? So the oxygen is being consumed as we literally speak on this. Um, I'm sort of perplexed as to why we keep going back to this argument, we being the administration and really just the president, frankly. Uh, there's no actual evidence for this. I'm sure there were illegal votes. Voter fraud is a real phenomenon that ought to be guarded against. But three to five million, I think that was the line of questioning there. If you have millions of illegal votes, that could absolutely tip a national election. Shouldn't there be a serious investigation if you really believe this to be true? I've always believed that the best argument Trump could have made, and he did initially, it was his better argument on this, saying, forget the popular vote. I would have won that if that were the goal. If the whole campaign were structured to win the popular vote, I would have done that. Instead, it was a different chessboard, and I won that game. That's true. This illegal voting thing is a, a waste of time. And they repressed him about this and Sean Spicer said, well, maybe we will you know, launch into a look into it okay. at some point. Uh, point I don't being, know who's going to investigate just, this. It is I just mean... uh, after two pretty <clears throat> strong days as far as what's getting done. It's uh, getting in the way. Uh, you know, Rene Descartes once said, you know, the cogito ergo sum, I, I think therefore I am with Donald Trump. It's I believe, therefore it's true. And, and I don't, my Latin's too rusty, I can't translate it. But it, this is one of those moments where, just as Guy said, it gets in the way. And you can have a whole bunch of different things that you want to say. All of us are sitting around trying to work this out. If I were doing PR, here's what I'd say. And no one is doing what Donald Trump is doing. He is telling you how not to handle the first few days of a presidency. When it comes to something like that, I will say, I didn't see any angry tweets this morning about the front page story in the Washington Post or the New York Times covering this and the tumult in the first couple of days. So it may be that he's holding off on that. But I can also only imagine what it's like to have to be out in front of the press, as Sean Spicer is, to say, well, he believes, therefore we are operating under the assumption that we should keep acting that it's true. I, that, that makes no sense. So we should point out, Sean Spicer is with Sean Hannity uh, tonight on his show, kind of behind the scenes of the press operation. I'm not a conspiracy theory guy, Charles, but I watched candidate Trump own the next day of, of heads exploding on the left and in the, in the media, and, and then he won. I mean, he was a winner and he's always figured out how to win and I just there's some part of me that thinks is this somehow a strategy to it seems I can't figure out why but is it well guy asked the question why are we talking about this why is it being brought up and the answer is rather simple I don't think it's a strategy this is a character problem he defines himself as a winner Good people are winners. He's always said that. But frankly, he is a winner. And he is I a mean, winner. He, he, he turns out saying, to win. He does. But look, he, he's obsessed with the fact that he won the election. And nobody cares about the popular vote. He does. So he considers this a slight to his image and to his self-image as a guy who runs the table, who wins everything. Why did he bring up the size of the crowd at the inaugural? That's nuts. Nobody cares. He cares. Why did he bring up the ratings for The Apprentice? He cares about this. 
And you go back to the Iowa primary, he had to blame his coming second on a trick done by Ted the Cruz, lying Ted. That's his character. He wins anyway, so maybe in the end it won't matter, but that's the answer. It's a character issue. He scores more points. He, he, he's scoring more points in every game, but he's arguing over whether or not he actually completed more passes. On Sirius XM Radio and syndicated columnist Charles Krauthammer. Okay, Guy, thoughts on, uh, well, I guess the past two days, but today's actions. Well, on the pipelines, this is a layup for Donald Trump. It's good optics, it's good economics, it's good politics. And it's a clear pivot away from the Obama administration that slow walked these things and killed the pipelines, I think, for nakedly political reasons. Uh, that was a pander to certain interests within the Democratic coalition, well moneyed interests on the environmental sort of green side of things, and Trump is not going to be indebted to them. So this sort of rolls into one neat package, a number of different narratives that we currently are preparing the application and, and intend to do so. KXL, and this is again the XL, Keystone XL pipeline, creates thousands of well-paying construction jobs and would generate tens of millions of dollars in annual property taxes to counties along the route as well as more than three billion dollars to the US GDP. Earth Justice, an environmental group, says we are shocked and dismayed by today's news because it puts water for millions at risk. It goes on after that. Let's bring in our panel. Guy Benson, political editor at townhall.com. Tim Farley, host and managing editor of Morning Briefing, POTUS. This is with regard to the construction of the Keystone Pipeline, something that's been in dispute, and it's subject to a renegotiation of terms by us. We'll see if we can get that pipeline built. A lot of jobs, 28,000 jobs, great construction jobs. We build the pipelines, we want to build the pipe. Got to put a lot of workers, a lot of steel workers back to work. We're bringing manufacturing back to the United States Big League. I am, to a large extent, an environmentalist. I believe in it. But it's out of control. Workday 2. A lot of stuff going on. Here's what happened today. Executive orders that President Trump signed. Reviving the Keystone XL pipeline project. Reviving the Dakota Access Pipeline project. Gives the Commerce Department 180 days to maximize the use of U.S. steel in the pipelines. Direct uh, the Commerce Department to streamline the permitting process for manu manufacturing. Expedite the environmental permitting process for infrastructure projects that includes pipelines, roads, bridges, etc. Well, TransCanada put out a statement quickly. This is from their spokesperson. We appreciate the President of the United States inviting us to reapply for KXL. Trump wants to pursue about his administration, creating jobs, putting working people to work, and no one's going to be cheering louder than some of those union bosses with whom he met just yesterday in Washington, D.C. A lot of bipartisan support for this. Uh, smart move, no brainer. Yeah, and that union image, the fact that he had that, that meeting with seven unions who all endorsed Hillary Clinton in the election was quite something. Yeah, it was, and this is kind of a short-term thing in some ways in terms of jobs because permanent jobs will not be plentiful as a result of this. I think one of the things that goes even deeper, especially with the Dakota Access Pipeline, is that this attacks and some